Okay, so today I want to talk about like a kind of obscure topic, I guess, and it's the row to list uh, feature in PureScript. So this actually lets us like convert a record into a type of a list of the fields, and it lets us like write stuff directly instead of having to use generics or stuff. And it also lets us uh, like do a bunch of stuff like um, yeah, like uh, parsing JSON without using generics and like typing a lot of stuff that's like based on record APIs. So like uh, something like cycle.js. Um, I'll like add some stuff to your description of like when I presented this at a gathering, but for this video, I'll just go over like some kind of simple example. So I wanna do something like a uh, stringify demo, I guess. And I want to just like iterate through the keys of it, or iterate through the fields of a record and just like string by them. So like let's go in here. Uh, I don't know how to use Windows. I'll do like pulp in it, and we'll need like two libraries probably. Like we're gonna need something to do generic record operations. So like we'll need a pure script record, and then we're going to need something where we like do stuff on a list, like probably like intercalate some uh, items. So like we'll add uh, prescript list. And then let's open a new session and get started. So uh, let's do this, open up our file. And then let's uh, start by like saying like um, we need some kind of tag class, right? Uh, to actually match some method to an instance. So we'll write like a class like write JSON. And I'll take a variable A and we'll have a function called like write JSON and it'll be A to string. And like instead of just like writing out everything, I'm just going to write a few things like uh, Let's say instance string write JSON. It's going to be write JSON for a string. And it's going to be write JSON. S is, well, just going to return the actual string. And just for like one more example, I'll just do like int write JSON. And this will be write JSON int where write json i and then like the copy pasteable code for pure script integers is the same as javascript so i'll just put in show i here so uh like say we can already do like what we're thinking of with like arrays right like what are arrays you have the type constructor array and then you have the item inside and then you're going to do like uh well you apply like the argument there and you have the array of a's right so if we want to do that, we write like instance array, write JSON, and then the inner thing needs to be uh, write JSONable, I guess, it, like any side of the constraints. And we do write JSON on array of A, and then we do write JSON XS, and uh, I'm gonna print it with like square brackets, right? So say like contents, and then we'll put the inside contents in a where block, or we'll say like, uh, oh man, can I type? Contents will be like uh, intercalating a bunch of like commas in between some elements. And we'll do like write JSON and do uh, this on the elements of our array. And let's just write out some examples real fast. So like log write JSON of uh, SDF and then do that the same for like uh, one and then the same for like array one, two, three. Go here and just like run this on watch. And we'll have, well, yeah, stringified stuff. So uh, let's get into like the obscure thing now, right? So to actually iterate through our uh, row, uh, 
record fields, we're going to need to convert the row type inside the record into a row list. And then we need to iterate through that type level row list using a type class with the instance matching. So uh, let me just write out like the actual type class first. So type class will be like class uh, write JSON fields. Now I'll take the RL first for a row list. So row list. And then I'll take a row type for the rest. So we'll just call it row for now. And then in order to make this actually uh, match on only the row list. So when it tries to in it, when it tries to resolve the instances, I want it to only care about the row list. So I'm going to say like row list is what creates a dependency for row. If that's even like the correct way of uh, dictating this thing. And then yeah, we'll have like write JSON fields for, for all G. So like some kind of container for our row list. We'll also pass in a record of our row, so like the original record that we want to stringify, and then a list string. And then this will be like the uh, the key value pair strings that I'll, I'll like smash together in for the final product. Um, probably missing this, yeah. I want to just use a strict list. Okay, uh, let's write like the base case first, just because that's easier in my mind. So like if you do like instance nil write JSON fields, right? So like cause list, it needs to have like a nil element for what's what happens with like empty stuff. Like write JSON fields. And this will be nil coming from type row and row, which we won't use, but we, just, we have to give it a real name. So write JSON fields. And then ignore two arguments. The first one be the proxy that we use for resolution. And then the second one be the actual record. Like if we don't have anything more to pull out, then well, it just needs to be a uh, empty. So now let's write the actual uh, instance, right? So let's do instance cons, write JSON fields. And we're going to have like a bunch of uh, constraints that we to take care of. But um, I guess I'll write them like as I go. So first I'll just write like the rest of it. So a type of a list is going to have a cause element, right? And it takes the, it, uh, takes a bunch of stuff, right? So it takes the symbol for what the field name is, it takes a type for what the value that's actually in that field is, it takes like the, uh, the rest of the row list, the rest of the type of a list, and then gives you back like the completed row list uh, type or row list kind, I guess. And this is a thing that like maps back to what we had over here for our row list kind. So let's say name, tie, tail, just easy names, I think. And then the actual row type for the record that we're going to be using. So I'll just put in like some empty stuff first, so underscore and a directional record, and we'll just say like, eh, I don't know. Uh, so what's the first things we need to know? Like, um, so our name, we know it's a symbol, and, but we do have to add the constraint for it. So we say like, is symbol. And this also lets us uh, reflect the symbol back to it, to extract up the string from the symbol. So this is like pretty, pretty convenient. So let's add that. Uh, yeah, if I add this, it looks kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, for now, let's do this. And then uh, the type, we need to just make sure that it's like uh, write JSONable so that we can actually use it. So let's say write JSON and then type. And then we need to make sure that the rest of the, ro uh, rest of the list is actually uh, has like the instances and they all match like the thing that we want. So I write JSON fields and then this will take like our tail and then the row type for the whole record that we pass on down. 
and then we need to do like uh, one more thing where in order to actually extract out the uh, field for the JSON using it as name, we need to be able to do the, uh, we need to declare that there is some kind of relationship that the name with the given type is actually inside of a row, right? And for this, we actually have this thing called the uh, row cons. So it's like uh, this element is const onto our row. So here we put in their name, our type, and we don't really care about like the row, like bef the row that doesn't have our field. So we're just gonna name this like whatever. And row goes here because that's the actual row that we want to match with our instance. All right. So let's actually start the, defining this uh, implementation. Uh, well, easy thing to work with for a list is to get the head and then cons it onto the rest. And then the where block will start writing up the stuff where I need to get the name proxy. So I'm gonna make a string proxy using the name. And then the key will be like, when you reflect the symbol you, by passing into the string proxy, you get back the string. Uh, the value would be, um, sure, like we'll get it out of a record, but then we need to write the JSON form of it first, or once we've extracted it out. Let's put in like write JSON, and then we'll get, and there's like a bunch of these, but thankfully the first one is data record. And this is the same thing that we wrote for our constraints. Like we need to, it needs to be a symbol that's inside of our string proxy. And then our row cons constraint needs to be satisfied by our record. And after that, it gets us back the actual uh, item that's inside of the field. So let's import that. And we'll pass in name P and then the actual record that's part of our uh, part of the arguments. All right. And then uh, what else do I need? So now that I have like the key and value, I can actually create like the head. So the head will be uh, what? Like the, it needs to be like the quoted string key and it needs to have col uh, colon and the value. We'll just do like uh, whatnot. Append it to the key, append it to another escape quote with the colon, and then that all append it to value. And then for the rest of the stuff, the rest will just have to create like a proxy for the row list and then, uh, pass it on down. So TLP is going to be row list proxy, and then we'll do like row list proxy of the tail, and then we'll say rest is when you write the JSON fields using uh, the tail proxy and the record that we have right now. And what am I missing? Oh, forgot to import this. And yeah, actually that's about it for the whole like type class for doing this. So uh, let me just close real fast. So you just define a type class. It needs to work with the row list. So you declare the kind here. And the row kind of doesn't matter. Maybe it'd be more explicit to kind uh, declare that it is like row of types, but kind of doesn't matter. And then we have the functional dependency. So like once the instance actually matches like a row list, like it doesn't have to care like what row the row is. We only need to match on the row list. And then yeah, for all G, G, R, L, where G is like proxy or just about anything you want to use for phantom types. And then record row and list string. And then yeah, the actual instances are like, well, no case, you just return an empty list. And then in the case that you actually have something, you do a head, const to rest, and then uh, the most important thing is that you can actually get the thing, get the actual value out of the record, write it to JSON, and then use a sim, sim, 
use the uh, symbol name for getting that out and then also for stringifying to your head. Uh, yeah, and then let's just write our row thing now. So our row record instance needs to be uh, similar to the array one. So record write JSON. We'll do, uh, well, there'll be a bunch of uh, stuff here. So just leave this blank for now. And then we'll do write JSON on their record and have the row type available. And then we'll say where write JSON rec is equal to like this append it to fields and then with the closing bracket and then this will be like where uh, we'll do similar things where like we need to get like a row list proxy and then do whatnot. Um, I guess for now I'll just leave this blank. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, in, a, in order to actually get this row list that I've been talking about, though we had this like con uh, pretty convenient constraint called row list. Or, uh, sorry, row to list. And it lets us uh, pass in a row and get a row list back, and then bam, it works, right? And this is like uh, just going to require that we pass in a row and then give it a name for what we want to call a row list. I'm just going to write RL. And then we need to add the uh, tag class constraint from before. So I'm going to add like write JSON fields. Pass in an RL and then pass in the row, which it won't care, but this is the actual type that we do need to like pass through for the record that we're trying to read fields out of. Yeah, after that, um, everything becomes like similar to before. We just do like a RLP, and this needs to be like a row list proxy again, and row list proxy of the RL, and then we do. Uh, the intercalated comma of the list of the fields that we get back. So same thing as the array uh, implementation basically. Like write JSON fields on the, uh, let's see, the RLP and then the record. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually about it. Um, so if we take this write JSON and we pass it a record, we'll get it working. So A123, B, A, ASDF, and then C, we'll just pass in our, another record just for hell of it. And we'll say D123. Save. Boom. It works. And it's like correctly, uh, correctly, um, Resolving that the nested record should be handled the uh, right JSON fields to plus.